Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So, okay, yeah. What Stacy said earlier certainly resonates with me. Um, you know, we all need to take time out these days in a very, very busy world. Um, and whether you're doing it through relaxation, through meditation, um, you know, they, they are fantastic tools and they certainly help sleep as well. But making sleep a priority is something that we really all should consider doing. So I'm going to go into three main areas this morning um, in a bit more detail probably than, than you realised before. Um, and I really hope that you'll find them useful. So I'm a qualified sleep coach. Um, I'm a further education teacher as well. And many, many years ago, um, I trained as a holistic therapist in various therapies. Um, so moving on to a sleep coaching business was quite a sort of natural progression for me. Um, I don't know whether any of you have come across Matthew Walker. Matthew Walker um, wrote or has written a book called Why We Sleep. It's, it's very scientific based, but it's definitely worth a read. There's some fantastic data in there, some fantastic tools and techniques. And his quote really resonates with me. There is a better form of you waiting on the other side if you get enough sleep. And that is so, so true. So yeah, if you, if you find a copy of Matthew's book, do give it a look. So we are going to start um, with our light ritual because light has a huge amount to do with controlling our internal body clock. So when and at what time of the day you get certain types of light really impact on the way that you sleep. So how does light affect the way you sleep? As I've said, getting the right type of light at the right time of day is hugely important to achieving good sleep. I've mentioned our internal body clock, which is called our circadian rhythm, and it coordinates a wide number of processes in the body, including sleep. And it's very much programmed to light and darkness during its 24 hour cycle. Um, it's roughly 24 hours, not spot on, but for everybody it's slightly different. So you can see that this natural body, internal body clock, because it's governed as far as sleep's concerned by light and darkness, you can see how important that getting the right type of light at the right time of day is crucial. So I don't know if any of you have heard of melatonin, I'm sure you have. Melatonin is our sleep hormone, which starts production. Um, it, it starts actually being secreted late in the afternoon, um, but reaches its peak around 9 p.m. And that signals to our body that it's nearly time to go to sleep. It then stops production in order for us to wake up around 7.30 in the morning. So this is how our internal body clock, our circadian rhythm works, and it reacts to light and darkness. So the different types of light we need, one of the most important things is to um, be subjected to sunlight and natural light at the beginning of the day, because these help trigger our daytime hormones, which wake us up, and make us alert and ready to start our day. So that morning light that first hits our optic nerve in our eyes sends signals to stop the production of melatonin, because obviously you don't want that during the day, you want it at night time. Spending um, about 20 minutes outside in morning light um, is hugely beneficial, whether it means you sit outside to drink your cup of coffee, you sit by an open window even, or you walk down to get your newspaper. That morning light is really important. So I would urge all of you to, to do that. What we then need to do as the day progresses, because we want to 
um, stop our daytime hormones being secreted, stop the production of those or slow them down as the day progresses, we need to dim our evening light exposure. And it's quite important to do that just before it's your natural bedtime. So an hour prior to bed is, is really a great time to start dimming those lights. You know, whether it be you're in a lounge, turn off your pendant lights and maybe have some, um, some lamps that have a lower wattage bulb in them. Um, and that starts to give signals to our brain to start releasing melatonin, our sleep hormone. So also a very top tip is a regular bedtime routine, which I know is difficult to obtain, not always possible, but certainly advisable um, because our brain will associate that routine with preparing for bed and for sleep. Now, probably a lot of you have heard that it's not a great thing to keep devices in the bedroom. And that's because our mobile phones, our laptops, um, even the, the, the standby lights on something like a television emit something called blue light. And blue light is a type of light that will stop the production of melatonin. So we really, really don't want that as the evening progresses. And I recommend clients who've got a very um, severe sleep um, problem to actually ban them from the bedroom altogether. One thing that we can do that um, is helpful um, for, for um, stopping blue light admissions is to use something like a filter. So you can buy filters for mobile phones, you can buy them for laptops, you can even buy glasses, which is fine if you don't have prescription glasses, but useless if you do. Um, you can buy these, there's a great company called OcuShield that um, produce these um, products. They've also got a nighttime light that I actually have in my bedroom here. Um, and that really, really helps dim those lights down during the very important time of the evening. So try to switch off your digital devices as well 90 minutes before bed. We don't want that stimulation. We want melatonin. We want to be relaxed. We want to be ready to go to bed and go to sleep. So LED lights, as I've said, also produce blue lights. So try and ban those too. We've talked about the filters and they're definitely worth trying, but do go for a good quality company because some of the things you can get on Amazon are not of, of a great quality. So I definitely think somewhere like OcuShield is worth going to. So that is light. Um, I don't know whether any of you sort of have, have sort of thought about any of those aspects, morning and evening light, but now you've got a few more pointers to be able to to be able to put into place to achieve a good night's sleep. We're now going to just quickly look at diet. Um, diet is obviously important um, for all sorts of reasons, but it's important mainly from a sleep point of view um, as to when you eat, because that does have an effect on our internal body clock, our circadian rhythm, which helps us to sleep well. So we're giving signals by the times that we eat during the day to our circadian rhythm, internal body clock, and it's important to know that you're keeping a regular um, sort of eating time um, to, to maintain that rhythm. So let's just look at a few tips, general tips from a diet point of view that, that, that will help you um, to improve sleep. We all know we need a healthy, well-balanced diet um, and we need that to be full of vitamins and minerals. Um, and a lot of those will include vitamins and minerals, micronutrients, antioxidants, which can all help improve sleep by helping, having that healthy, well-balanced diet. 
you can ensure that you get all those necessary things. One point that I often make to clients is eating the rainbow is a very, very good way to look at the amount of foods that you include in your diet that have different colors because they all um, contain different nutrients. So to vary those colors throughout your diet is quite important. So there have been research studies, a lot of them, that show that certain nutrient deficiency can shorten our sleep times. So it is important to have that well-balanced diet and have those essential vitamins and minerals and not go deficient in any of them. Try not to eat too late. I'm absolutely sure all of you will have experienced sometimes that you eat late in the evening and you feel full and you feel slightly bloated by the time you go to bed. You want to give yourself probably from 7, 7.30 onwards if you can manage it um, before bed. So eat your main meal 7 to 7.30 in the evening. It's all right to have a little snack before you go to bed but don't have something, a large meal, too close to bedtime. I mean, obviously we know that that can cause a risk of acid reflux. Not everybody suffers from that, but definitely our bodies will be digesting a big meal, which we want to try and avoid. Also be careful with um, spicy and fatty foods in the evening, because they can be detrimental to getting a good night's sleep, falling asleep. Um, Drinking water, and on that note, I'm going to have a slurp. Um, keeping hydrated is super important. Um, and it's important to drink at least 1.5 litres of good quality water per day, which is approximately eight to nine small glasses of water. It's not an easy ask, um, and I think you need to be a bit tuned into it. Um, Possibly you can add things like um, herbal, uh, herbal teas as well, because they will um, add up to your water intake. Um, but teas and coffees with milk and things don't count as much. Yes, they're liquid, but they're not water. So your 1.5 litres is a, is a good recommendation as far as quantity is concerned. Now, again, not probably a lot of people are aware, aware of this, but when you sleep, you can lose quite a large amount of water and it's very easy to become dehydrated. I don't know whether any of you have woken up and felt, gosh, I'm thirsty and needed to drink a glass of water immediately. Um, so that's what happens during the night. We lose water through breathing. We lose water through um, perspiring. So it's important to keep that quantity of water um, intake up throughout the day. Dehydration then in turn has a negative effect on sleep and actually causes tiredness, lack of energy. It causes sugar cravings, poor concentration and various little minor ailments. Headaches, I think is the big one with dehydration. So water is extremely important, good quality water at that as well. So one of the uh, nutrients, minerals, um, vitamins I wanted to mention, there are numerous, but magnesium is probably my go-to mineral for, for, for sleep. Um, it's one of the most important nutrients for your body. Um, and we need it to function optimally. There are several ways that um, magnesium deficiency can, uh, can impact on our quality of sleep. It can increase stress and anxiety levels if you're deficient in magnesium. Um, so obviously being stressed and anxious can stop you sleeping well. If, especially as we get older, any ladies going through the menopause will probably resonate with this. Um, magnesium, a deficiency of magnesium can cause muscle cramps, aches and pains. So it's a really important mineral to make sure that we're getting um, enough of. It isn't that easy to obtain enough magnesium through into, uh, food intake alone. Um, so what I would recommend is that you use either a topical spray 
which you can buy from most health food shops, um, or bath in magnesium salts. That's actually an easier way of doing it. Um, supplements, yes, you can buy, but they're not always tolerated by everybody. They can upset tummies. So magnesium flakes are really my best recommendation. The sprays can actually sting a little bit. Well, that's what I found. So that's why I think the magnesium flakes are a better option. But keeping your magnesium levels tip top is important. The last thing we're going to go on to is exercise. And again, much like eating, um, food intake, and much like light, it's important when and how much you do at certain points during the day. So exercise has a chemical effect on the brain. Um, it, um, it produces this chemical, I, know, I always get this word, I knew that I'd fall down on this one, uh, adenosine, which helps facilitate sleep. Um, and more importantly, the initial, it initiates the early stages of sleep. As far as exercise is concerned, without sufficient sleep, it's very, very hard to maintain mo motivation and um, the energy necessary to exercise well. So again, exercising and sleep have such a close connection. You need it, you need sleep to, to have that motivation and energy, um, and it's great to exercise to increase your ability to sleep as well. So it's a, a two-way thing. So timing of exercise is crucial, um, as we've talked with light and with food intake. If you are a gym bunny, if you enjoy doing quite, quite hard exercise or moderate, what I class as moderate aerobic exercise, it's better taken in the morning um, because that has been shown that, that actually exercising to that degree in the morning will help the extent of sleep that, that you have in the uh, during the night and it's better doing it in the morning than doing it in the afternoon or early evening. Trying to avoid the major strenuous exercise within two hours of bedtime is important. Um, some people can get away with it, but most people can't. So if people are suffering from sleep deprivation and sleep problems, I would recommend that they do their strenuous exercise in the morning, not in the afternoons or in the evenings. There are obviously much more um, uh, suitable exercises to do during the evening. Yoga and stretching exercises obviously are absolutely ideal um, because they can promote feelings of relaxation and therefore improve our sleep. So very important the timing of your exercise. So the last thing I just wanted to talk about was um, the sleep masterclass I mentioned earlier. Um, I held one of these um, now three weeks ago because there is a very close connection between the sleep and, um, and um, um, weight gain. If you're sleep deprived, you are much more likely to gain weight. And it's, it's quite a complicated um, circle. So if you'd like to find out more and discover the five essential elements for improved sleep and weight loss, then um, I'd love to see you on Friday, the 11th of June at 12 noon. Um, it's a 37 pound masterclass and it lasts for 90 minutes. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, if any of you've got any questions, um, I'm, I'm happy to 